Welcome to the Unitarian Church in Fall River. We open our hearts and minds today on this Memorial Day weekend to the human conditions of war and peace. War has erupted throughout human history and somehow peacemaking has slowly made more and more inroads so that we do not lose hope for a better and more peaceful world. However, today we must light our chalice, symbol of Unitarian Universalist religion, for the shocking loss last Tuesday of the lives of 19 beautiful third and fourth grade students and their two teachers in the town of Uvalde Texas. Their lives were extinguished by an 18-year-old boy with a machine-like gun that he had bought for himself on his birthday. As one songwriter wrote, when will we ever learn? When will we ever learn? Let us have a minute of silence to mourn the loss of those children, their teachers and their families. May they be remembered always. 
Perhaps our first hymn can help lift our spirits. Number 126, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Does anyone have any announcements today? Richard? Uh, next Sunday from 2 to 5, no, noon to 4. Noon to 5. Noon to 5. Noon to 5 at the Open Center. And no, it is it is part of the daytime celebration. We're going to have some. Uh, Representatives, we go to the church passing out the leaflets. Are there any others? Kit? Any others? I have an announcement. Yes. Uh, I'd just like to uh, spread the word that uh, I am available for any kind of household chores or mowing the lawn or painting or anything minor work around the house if you want to get done. Uh, I'm looking for activities to do during the summer. 
if you'd like to help me out, I can help out you, even with the computers or cell phones, anything like that. But just in general, ideas, anyone you can get in touch with, and I'll give you my number after the service. Any others? Well, notice that we have uh, two readings from the hymnal today. Uh, first is a responsive reading uh, for Memorial of the Dead, and the second one is for Peace. 583, The Young Dead Soldiers. Number 583. The young dead soldiers do not speak. They have a silence that speaks for them at night and when the clock counts. We were young, we have died, remember us. They say, we have done what we could, but until it is finished, it is not done. They say, we have given our lives, but until it is finished, no one can know what our lives gave. They say, our deaths are not ours, they are yours. They will mean what you make of them. They say, whether our lives and our deaths were for peace and a new hope or for nothing, we cannot say. It is you who must say this. They say, we leave you our deaths, give them their meaning. We were young, they say. We have died. Remember us. And the second one is uh, 578, just a few pages before. One page before. This great lesson. That's a unison reading. So let's read it together. We can never make the world safe by fighting. Every nation must learn that the people of all nations are children of God and must share the wealth of the world. You may say this is impracticable, far away, can never be accomplished, but it is the work we are appointed to do. Sometime, somehow, Somewhere we must ever teach this great lesson. Now let us say together from the affirmation from your order of service. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve human need, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. song I'm going to sing this morning is uh, Nearer My God to Thee. Uh, not exactly a Unitarian uh, uh, subject here. I actually uh, sang it in the Episcopal Church. I sang all four parts uh, over the years. And, uh, 
So uh, this is uh, the first two verses. I left out some of the more egregious ones here. And uh, the, uh, the story is that uh, the band was playing the song when the Titanic was going down. Uh, hopefully we do a little better here this morning. So here we go. Nearer, my God, to me, nearer to thee, even though it be this cross that had raises me. So all my dream shall be nearer, my God, to me, nearer, my God, to me, So I, the wanderer, the sun gone down, darkness be over me, my rest a stone. Still, my dream shall be nearer, my God, to do nearer, my God, to do nearer to be. So. Let us go inwards in the spirit of prayer and meditation. And let us breathe together. Feel the spirit within and also that communal spirit we can feel only when we gather together. You can feel it even more greatly when you put your hands on your heart. Spirit of love and life, eternal God, we open our hearts and minds this morning in anguish for the lives lost this week in Uvalde, Texas. May we better learn the lessons of nonviolence. And yet, on this Memorial Day weekend, we give thanks for those living and dead who gave up their lives and peace of mind in the cause of the good, of justice, of freedom. For such is the human condition. May we find ways 
to create a more peaceful world. Into the silence now, let us each speak the promptings of our own hearts or just be. In affirmation, let us all say Amen. 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 I wanted us to become aware of how the world's religions speaks about peace. And so I chose a passage from the Tao Te Ching. That's the Chinese Taoist uh, uh, sacred book. And Tao Te Ching is simply the book of life or the book of the way. This is from chapter 31. Weapons and tools of violence, all decent men detest them. Weapons are the tools of fear. A decent man will avoid them, except in the direst necessity, and, if compelled, will use them only with the utmost restraint. Peace is his highest value. If the peace has been shattered, how can he be content? His enemies are not demons, but human beings like himself. He does not wish them personal harm, nor, no, nor does he rejoice in victory. How could he rejoice in victory and delight in the slaughter of men? He enters a battle gravely, with sorrow and with great compassion, as if he were attending a funeral. I was looking for an old sermon for Memorial Day. I thought perhaps I can use an old one. And I came across one. And um, in it, I, I, I began with saying that my husband, Leo, who's sitting right here, um, I had said to him earlier that morning, only half the people will be in church because it's Memorial Day weekend and so many of them have gone away. And he said, oh, does that mean the sermon will only be a half sermon? <laughs> no, Leo, it's not a half sermon. <laughs> so I called the, the sermon, Hail the Warriors and the Peacemakers. Memorial Day, called Remembrance Day in the UK, was both a solemn and somewhat jovial event in my household. While Dad was, was on his once a week Sunday morning trip to the local pub, Mum would get out her and Dad's medals from World War II and she'd polish them she told us stories, or we wondered, tall tales, about each one of her medals. She had been in the Women's Royal Air Force, while Dad was in the Royal Navy. 
of my father's medals, she would just say, this one was for going down in the HMS Kingston. And this one was for going down in HMS something or other. Because three of the ships on which my father had served had sunk. I sometimes wonder to myself, did the sailors on that fourth ship know that my dad was... <laughs> my dad had clung to debris for hours, perhaps days before being rescued on one of those ships. We thought she was telling a tall tale when she said that dad had strapped an unconscious body to a piece of metal and didn't know whether he survived. But one day, they came home from celebrating mom's birthday at a country inn. They were flushed with excitement of having found this body after 40 years. The body owned the pub. <laughs> it was drinks all around. Dad never, ever spoke of his war experience. He was quite happy leaving it all to mum. It was unusual to have the television on during the daytime, mostly because there was no daytime programming in those days. Was that true in this country too? There was no programming during the daytime? Yes. But on this Remembrance Sunday in the UK, held on the second Sunday in November, there would be services at war memorials all around the country. The final act would be when Queen Elizabeth would lay a wreath at the National Cenotaph in London. I finally looked up the official meaning of cenotaph. I thought all countries had, had these. I, I suspect most European countries do. And I see the meaning is a monument built to honor people whose remains are interred elsewhere or whose remains cannot be recovered. By the way, when I served a church in Canada, we found there are, ah, yes, there are equally moving rituals in most Canadian provinces on Remembrance Day. Leo and I were particularly moved by those gatherings. Another reason we were very moved was that um, people who served uh, in some, the war effort in some capacity like the Victoria <laughs> nurses would lay a wreath and others, no matter what their capacity was, it was up to them to lay a wreath. So it wasn't just the people who were fighting. So after mum polished the medals, we would watch military parades taking place in the national stadium, including the famous US Marines doing their fancy footwork while playing jazz music. Strangely, I have never seen such displays on this scale here. Have you ever seen the, the Marines uh, dancing to their music? No, oh, I thought it was just common over here, but no. Very old men in, un in uniforms from the Boer War and World War I would totter across the stadium and my mother would shed tears. I now realize that we children were watching our mother not realizing the full extent of what she and dad had experienced. The experience of war had certainly marked their lives and ours, because as you can see, this was a great part of our growing up. Years later, when mom was in a nursing home, Leo and I went to visit 
visit her, and then for the first time, Leo met my father. Leo was telling my father how he had grown up in his teen years in Nazi-occupied Holland, in Amsterdam. Dad looked straight at Leo and me, and he said, it's funny, but it seems to me like all of that never happened. I don't know why, but it just doesn't seem real anymore. Had his silence almost erased his memory of war? We didn't know what to say as we watched dad shake his head wordlessly. For my husband Leo, however, his teenage years under Nazi occupation in Amsterdam are as fresh today as if he'd experienced it yesterday. Even the images of Jewish neighbors being taken from their homes in the middle of the night. But then Leo wasn't in the killing fields. Though he knew his uncles had been executed for harboring Jews. I share all this personal stuff with you, thinking that perhaps you have experienced such rituals in your family. Certainly, there have been many wars since World War II. Perhaps the cause was not so noble, such as that of Korea or Vietnam, the Gulf War, or some of the Bal Balkan or Middle Eastern wars since then. We have all learned to value the bravery and commitment of those who have sacrificed and to appropriately honor the courage of men and women who fight for freedom. How is it for you now to witness the war in the Ukraine? How is it for you? And it being fought with such terrible odds, even though victory is often and winning is often on the lips of so many. And how is it for you to hear a Senate candidate declare, I just don't care about the Ukraine. Did you hear that this week? Can he get away with this because we don't have boots on the ground? We don't officially have boots on the ground but we are funding that war and we do have incredibly brave volunteers. A reporter interviewed a group of young men, former Marines at one of our airports. They were bound for Poland and the Ukraine to join the soldiers there. They, they said, we believe in what they're doing and we want to help. I was amazed at that. It is possible that others from many other countries are doing the same. We know this to be true. May they be safe. I'm so very glad that we have Memorial Day so that we can think on these things and challenge our own thinking. It is not easy to be a warrior at war or the parent, sibling, spouse or friend of one Will war and violence never end? You've probably heard the quip. My son was watching me read War and Peace and asked me, why is the book so thick? Have you seen the size of War and Peace? I said, well, it's a long story. Indeed, it unfortunately is in almost all of human history. This morning's reading, unison reading, called The Great Lesson said, every nation must learn that the people of all nations are children of God and must share the wealth of the world. I take that to heart. 
because when we all recognize that we're all children of God, meaning that we have the divine within us, only then will we no longer go to war. We'd be killing God, wouldn't we? Killing each other is killing God. I wonder whether my dad had come to see his former enemies as human beings like himself. Some 20 years after the war, he had, after all, bought a German car. Something that amazed everyone who knew him. After all he'd been through, would he now support peace? I suspect he would. All the world's religions counsel peace in one way or another. In the reading, we heard that the words from the Tao Te Ching, counseling restraint when taking up arms. One of the most powerful teachings of Jesus is, on the front of the order of service, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be the children of God. You have to think about what that really means. I've always felt that the peacemaker is a high level human being, one with a great heart and the skill to reconcile people, one who is godlike. Maybe something that we will all aspire to. If you check on the internet, you'll find that fifth grade students learn that three great peacemakers in recent history are, I think you probably would have named these, at least two of them, Mohandas Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela. They all believed in equality and nonviolence. Even after Nelson Mandela had been a soldier and, as he said, killed many people. But he believed in nonviolence. They also had a great sense of purpose. For example, Martin Luther King Jr. need not have veered from the civil rights movement to the peace movement. Some people say that's what got him killed. And he said, words to the effect that the Vietnamese have, are suffering the same victimhood as that of black Americans. All three felt a great connection to others. A more modern day peacemaker was former <coughs> Senator George Mitchell. How many of you re re remember him? George Mitchell. He was the one that created the peace initiative in Northern Ireland. This conflict had, con had continued for 50 years. He was the one to create this peace, to help create this peace. But today, I want to introduce you to a very special woman called Peace Pilgrim. So before I go on, how many of you know of Peace Pilgrim? One, two, three, four, five. How many of you have seen her? Have you seen her in person? One. Peace Pilgrim was born Mildred Norman in Egg Harbor, Egg Harbor City that's close to Atlantic City in New Jersey, in 1908. She grew up on a chicken farm and she described her, her childhood as idyllic. She was tall and willowy and beautiful. She led the life of a flapper, the 1920s flapper, and she got married to a World War II veteran. 
After a series of mystical experience in her 20s and early 30s, she gave up her life of riches and material things, divorced, and began working for various peace movements, including against the nuclear weapons movement. After a particularly powerful mystical experience, she decided to give up her identity and renamed herself Peace Pilgrim. And her, the name she was born with never passed her lips. And actually no one knew that name because that family and those people in that place where she grew up would never tell. That's what she wanted. This was 1952. She thought she should become a wanderer for peace, walking the country, helping whoever she could, and talking to people about living a peaceful life and also how to gain inner peace. And she actually helped people who were mentally ill, people who were overworked, people who were extremely poor and needed help. She helped them in some way. Her hope was to talk to groups of people about this. She even talked with truck drivers at truck stops about it. To toughen herself up for this new life, she first walked the Appalachian Trail with only one set of clothes, a tunic with the words, Peace Pilgrim, writ large, back and front. In the early days, she had the number of miles that she, that she worked on the back, that she walked on the back. So she wore this tunic. It had two large pockets at the bottom of the tunic that carried her possessions a toothbrush, a pencil, a notebook, and one change of clothes. She wore a shirt and navy pants and tennis shoes. She slept on grass when she was tired and walked when she was rested. She ate when she was given food and slept in a bed when it was offered. In between, she foraged for fruits and berries and nuts. She talked to whoever wanted to talk and always brought the subject around to leading a peaceful life. When some people asked how they could get inner peace like her, she wrote a pamphlet called Steps Toward Inner Peace. And you can get that free today on the internet. Peace decided to walk for peace across the country. She began her walk at the 1953 Rose Bowl Parade in Pasadena, California, by accidentally leading the parade in her Peace Pilgrim outfit. She got quite a bit of publicity about this and experienced a little bit of fame. Over the next 20 years, Peace walked east to west, north to south, following the good weather. In all, she walked 25,000 miles, speaking on radio stations and groups of students and others, and in churches, including many UU churches. I met someone at our UU Ferry Beach camp in Maine, who had heard Peach Pilgrim speak in her church in Maine. Peace was never ill. There's a Peace Pilgrim organization based in Egg, Egg Harbor that keeps her story alive and you can get the newsletter. I get it um, two or three times a year. There are two statues of her, one in Egg Harbor and one in Costa Rica at the Peace College there. I would be happy to tell you the extended story about her and her teaching someday, if you would like. Of the famous peacemakers taught to fifth graders, Gandhi, MLK, and 
Nelson Mandela, all had religious ideals that guided them, as did Peace Pilgrim. Though her religious ideas, ideals were gleaned from the world's religions, they were rather Buddhist sounding. We too hold peace to be an ideal by way of our sixth principle, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Now I wonder what opinion these peacemakers and peace pilgrim herself would make of the war in Ukraine. I think we will all likely agree that to support Ukraine was a logical thing to do. How to live peacefully together in this world is a complex problem. Nothing short of a mass mind change, mind evolution, will get us anywhere close. But we can individually find a way to a peaceful heart, at least for one hour on a Sunday, and more so, each in our own way. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, when we honor those who died for our freedom. We can also honor those who fought and survived and lived with the terrible memories. And we can also remember and honor our loved ones. I feel sure that when we say Memorial Day, that many of us think about the people we have lost, not just to war, but in our own lives. And so while Nancy plays for us, I invite you to come forward to write the name of someone who is in your mind on this day. So let the memorial begin. The pad is right here by the chalice, by the way.
Thank you. It is time for our offering where we can support the work of this community and please be generous on this Memorial Day. I, do we come up to the front or shall, shall we pass the plate to uh, Richard? No. We don't pass the plate during the yeah. This is our time for sharing of joys and concerns. Does anyone have a joy or a concern they would like to share? Lisa, would you like to stand up? Hello, my name is Lisa Lyon. Um, my daughter Samantha is 25 and she is from Mexico. She's very Go on, you know, this link and see if they have. 
And sure enough, I went on, my father's records were there. So several cards and, uh, you know, when you went in, when you came out, where you went. Um, and uh, also they included a photograph that they happened to have in their file, too. Mm -hmm. And they just, I wrote them an email and they sent it all back to me on the computer. Yeah. Thank you for all of that. Uh, so let us sing our final hymn, number 159. This is my song. <coughs> May we always honor those who are willing to lay down their lives to bring freedom and justice into the world. But may we also honor the peacemakers and endeavor to create inner peace within us, thus creating little by little a more peaceful world. So may it be. Amen.